I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is February 18th, 2019. And this video will be going over how to use SVG image files in your 3D prints. Okay, so what is an SVG image file? How do I use it? What's the difference between regular image files? Uh, let me just go over some of that. So in the past, I have done some videos where I've seen some other people do this, where in Fusion 360, you can take an image file, just a regular old image file, bring it into Fusion 360, use it like a canvas to lay down, and then you can use it to trace over. And there's some really cool things you can do with that, and I like I like doing that. In some cases, that's your only choice. Um, now, an SVG file, an image file, compared to a regular image file, is very different. And there are some other formats that are similar to SVG, but here's the here's the gist of it. So, with a regular image file, you really have all these pixels. So you have all these pixels in the image, and if we did the image I don't want to say correctly, but the right size it should be. If you defined all the pixels and you gave them all the space they needed, the file sizes would be 10, 20, 30, 100 times bigger. They'd be gigantic, enormous files, and you really wouldn't get that much better quality. So for a long time, for 40, 50, I don't know, I mean, how old is JPEG? Some of these standards are really, really old. And so what they've done is a lot of smart guys have sat around and figured out how to compress the image file size. And whenever you compress something, you lose a little bit of quality, you give something up, you gain something, but you gain a lot of compression. So there's all these compression files out there, and so they work really well, and life is good. Um, some of the drawbacks to them is if you try to expand the, the you know, the, the benefits, small file. Drawbacks is when you try to expand the file or make it bigger, you end up pixelating it. We have a lot of algorithms right now, nowadays, to try to compensate for that, but that can happen. Um, any of those pictures, if you try to bring a picture into a CAD program, it just sees it as a picture. It can't go, oh, there's the lines, and I can define that. So I could take, um, like, for example, we have a house being built right now. I'm really excited about that. And so I have some drafting drawings of the, of the house. And so if I take those drawings, scan them in, make it to a JPEG or a PNG, um, they're not drafting drawings. It doesn't know about the size. They're just images. Now, an SVG, though... It's an image defined by rules. It's like, it's code. And so uh, here I happen to be showing an SVG file right now that I'll, I'm gonna work with. Um, this is th it's defined by lines. So if you say, hey, at this point, you go up there, you go here, you go here, you go here, you define the pieces, and you come back, and you, you define it. So it, when you're defining, the, defining those coordinates, since you define it like that, you can make it as big or as small as you want, and you don't lose quality. So there's some really cool things like that. But also, since you're defining lines, that's that's like AutoCAD. It's easy for it to bring that in. So if I, as an example, if I go over here, and I'll put this in the show notes, you know, W3 School Graphics SVG examples, uh, I can go over here and click on a circle. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but this is an actual example of an SVG file. So here's this SVG between these points, and this is the code. It says, hey, go over 50 points. On the X, 50 points in the Y, a radius of 40, give it a black stroke, and make it 3, and make it red. And that defines it. So I can change it to probably blue. Let me see if that works. And run that. So now it's blue. So it defines that. So if I take this file, copy it over, and zoom in, it's going to zoom in perfectly because it's mathematically defined. It's really cool. Um, for, you know, graphics that you see, you know, T-shirts and graphics, typical graphics is pretty easy to do. Uh, if you're taking a picture of, of a face or something, or a face, of a picture of out in nature, trying to make that into an SVG, SVG file, probably a big pain in the butt. Um, but the nice thing is, since they're nicely defined, and there's tons of them out there, um, you can bring them in, and you can and you can bring them to Fusion 360 real quickly. And I don't have to do that thing where I'm, you know, drawing over an image. It's just, it's done, and I can start doing things with it real easily. So, uh let me show you a few more places where you can get them real easily. If you just search for image and SVG, you'll probably find a ton. Uh, here's one that's a bicycle. Uh, here's SVG repo. You can go search for there. I found this bicycle, which I'll be probably doing another video, or I, we'll see if I use it. I, I made a little thing with it, which is kind of neat. Uh, also on Wikipedia, if you go to Wikipedia, a lot of those images you see that are more iconish are SVG files, or they have an SVG file version. So for example, I was looking up uh, United States Coast Guard. My father was in the Coast Guard. And so there's the emblem for the Coast Guard. So if I go on this page, you'll see a lot of pages have, you know, an image like this. And so that looks like something that could be defined uh, by rules, by, you know, mathematics. If I click on this image, and I'll go here to more detail. So here's this image. 
And so I can grab a PNG file, here's different sizes, but here is the original file, which is an SVG file. So I can click on here, this is the SVG file. And so I can, you know, zoom in, and it's gonna look just as good as, as it was on the smaller level. No pixelation because it's defined by rules. And so I can pull this off and do something with it. So uh, there's some examples. So now let me go pull something off and um, pull into Fusion 360 and actually do something with it. Okay, so I'm not a real big sports guy, uh, but the other day I was at an NHL game. We got invited there for uh, some reasons, but uh, they had this logo pop up and here was this, this mountain range. And I'm like, this is a really cool logo. I like this, but it's not the team logo. So I was searching and searching, trying to find this because it just shut up real quickly. So I didn't think it might not have been a team logo, just some little weird thing. Turns out there was a Colorado Rockies NHL team back in the 70s and 80s. Just unaware of it. I'm not an NHL hockey fan. So I had to go around here and I found the Wikipedia page. And guess what? I can click on here, open this up, and here is the SVG file. Of course, I can go here to more details and I can see there's, there's pixel in it. There's PNG images or I can get the original SVG. So I'll click here. Here's the SVG. And if they do it right, it says .svg. And so I will just download this to my desktop. Boom. So there we go. And now I'll bring that up in Fusion 360. So I'll go bring up Fusion 360. And I'll just make a new file here. I'll say a new component. And I'll say yeah, Rocky's logo. Uh, Rocky logo. Now... And I'll click on Origin to bring that in. Now, one thing when you bring those SVG files in, you know they're you might say they're unit, unitless, but they are by pixel, so they're not they're not well they are unitless. They're pixel, so say 100 pixels over here, 100 pixels over here. So it depends on the size of your screen. So in that sense, they don't, they're not aware of millimeters. So it's basically on your screen resolution. So sometimes when you bring it in, it may be ginormous, it may be small. So rather than try to guess that, you kind of think about what size you want. So I like to create a little sketch. So let me create a sketch here. I like to create a little size on roughly what I want it to be. So you know, I should have thought how big I want this to be. Let me bring up my calipers so I can think about it. So I'll make this. I'll make a big one. I'll make a yeah, I'll make a big one. About 90 millimeters. So I'll come in here, press S, and I'll make a rectangle. And I'll say 90, hit tab to go to the next one, hit 90, lock that in. And so 90 millimeters by 90 millimeters, that's kind of my rough guidelines. So now that I have that, and I'm still editing a sketch, I can go up here and say, insert SVG. Insert SVG, and I'll go out here and find that guy that I just downloaded. Let's see, where are you? Oh, I'm going to go to the desktop. There it is, Colorado Rockies. So I'll open that up, and there we go. So now I can position it and resize it. So I'll try to get it, I'll get it pretty close. And I'll make it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So I just use this kind of a guideline, hit okay. And so that's pretty roughly what I want. And then I'll just come back in here and delete these lines because they were just meant to make sure I didn't go too big or too small on this. Okay, so now I've got this and so let me bring up that image and put it to the side so I can stare at it. Okay, so now I'm looking at the other side so I can kind of think of what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna just take this and kind of extrude it. So I'll come down here and say, okay, how thick do I wanna be? So I'll select everything. I'll select everything, hit a Q, press pull tool, and I'll say, I'll go up, how do we go up? Uh, I'll go up eight millimeters, eight millimeters, remove that body, bring back the sketch. And then now I want everything. I, I don't have a multicolored printer, but I can do colors by layer. And so now I'll kind of go layer by layer. So the next color I want to do is I'll go white. So I'll say, okay, uh, that's going to be white. Now I could bring the whole thing up, uh, but I can do layer by layer because I know the other layers are going to extend beyond. So I'll say this, I want white. And so I'll say 8.4, um, maybe 8.6, 8.6, because I'm going from, I'm going to do a black bottom and then going to white, I'm doing 0.2 millimeter layers. So maybe three layers will be a really nice way to get that white in there really well. And I'll say, I'll bring the bodies back and I'll say join. 
Boom. So now if I move the sketch, I can see that outline a little bit better. I'll remove the bodies. Okay, next is will be the blue, which will be this. And I'll say Q and 8.6 plus 0.4 is 9. So I'll say 9 millimeters, bring the bodies back, say join, hit OK. So I got my blue. Let me move the body again. And next I want red. It's only a red one. So I'll hit Q, press pull, bring the body back, say join. That was 9, so 9.4, 9 .9 give me two layers, hit OK. And lastly, I got, well not lastly, I got one more, I like to do a border. So I hit the yellow, I'll press pull, 9.4, so 9.8, 9.8, join, bring the bodies back, hit OK. So, so far so good. Uh, then I'll bring, then I'll do a border. So I'll hit this border here, here and I'll say Q press pull, 9.8, so 10.2, 10.2. And bodies back and join. Boom. Remove the sketch. And there we go. I'm pretty much good to go. Now, one thing, it's going to be a little flat back. One thing, I'll probably turn this into a magnet at some point, which I'm not going to go in this video here. But one thing I've been doing with those magnets is I don't like the flat back. So I've been angling it in at a 45 degree angle slightly, which I don't, eh, this wouldn't work. You can do a press pull tool and pull it down. Let me try. This might be okay. Otherwise, I can do a loft. But I can go down here, say, create a sketch. Let me select this whole thing here. Do Q, bring it down. And we'll say taper angle negative 45. Okay. We're not going to go down 10, we're down 1 maybe, or 2. Let me see how that looks from the side. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, let's go down 2 millimeters, tape that off. Uh, when I was doing magnets, it makes it a little easier to grab behind it, but also... Also, you know, I hadn't thought about this too much. I was watching another video someone did, and they had to do some adjustments because they were doing spacers in the bottom. This was... Uh, the Icelandic guy, I forget his name. Um, but this might be a good point because that first layer kind of over time oozes out a little bit. It seems to kind of, you know, get a little fat. And so maybe having this come in is probably a good thing too. Okay, so there we go. So now let me save this. Colorado. Can I spell Colorado? I live here. Say Colorado. Ah, can't. I'll rename it later. No. Can I rename it here? Yeah, I'll rename it later. Anyway, so there we go. So now, another trick I've learned is, I mean, you can come up here and say, make a 3D print, right? And that works just fine. One thing I don't like about this is it always tries to, tries to default to the mesh maker, uh, which you can deselect, and the next time you choose it, you're fine. However, time you bring this up again, it doesn't remember what you did. But if you right click on a component and say save it as STL, you kind of sidestep that whole process. And at least I think you do. Yeah. Hit OK. I know that I said that I'll be wrong. And I will go into 3D prints, testing. Probably should make a new folder here. Hello, Rado. Logo. Yeah, I can't spell that again. Type in too fast. And we'll call this attempt one. I like to put these attempts in here because sometimes you mess up and it's nice to know how many times you messed up. Oh, you're saving it. Ooh, I did something. What did I do there? Right click. Yeah, save as STL. Oh, sorry, I saw STL and my brain was thinking SVG. Little brain fart there. Let's see. Testing. Colorado logo. Attempt one. Rockies. Rockies log. How about Rockies logo? 
Boom. Okay. Now let's go into our slicer, and I'm using Prusa Control for this. And I will bring this in to prints. Testing, color logo, temp zero, temp one, and drop it in. Boom. Perfect. And I'll say fast 0.2 millimeters, standard info. I don't need any of that. So generate. And I need to set some stop points. So I'll just leave this all. When I print it, I'll leave it all black. Black, 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 black. And then we get to. That would be the first blue layer. So there's the last white layer. There's one, two, three. Okay. There's white, one white, two white, three white, blue, one blue, two blue, red, one red, two red, yellow, one yellow, two yellow, and then my last border. And that'll be black. So I'll save this G code off and testing. Okay, so the G code saved. So let's go print it out and see how well it works. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. It turned out really well. I like what it left is. Um, now I'm going to personally redesign it a little bit because I like more of uh, the flat I have. Okay, I already redesigned it. There. I guess I should pull it out. Pull out and show my, pull out and show my redesign. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna post this. So here is the original SVG. Now here's a redesign I did, which I took another SVG of the Colorado flag and superimposed it. So I'm not gonna go over that, but you know, it's really easy with these SVGs. So, so there it is. But let me go before I go too far. Let me go over the numbers. So this took one hour and twenty minutes to print. It took 0 0.012 sample electricity and it weighs 0 0.020 kilograms and at $20 per kilogram that comes up to 40 cents so total cost to print this out 42 cents so you know I don't know what's, what more can you say there you have it SVGs I like SVGs as, now that I got into it SVGs are really easy to bring in really easy to use uh, in fact you know maybe I could be uh, doing something wrong but um, I recently redid my iQlist logo in SVG. I had done it originally. I had kind of done it mathematically in in Fusion 360, um, but it was kind of a pain to copy it from that file and put it over in another file and kind of adjust it. Uh, bringing in and out the SVG file is actually far easier. So it's funny. It's easier to work with an SG file in that case than it is to work with another Fusion 360 file or you know a sketch. Trying to move a sketch around seems to be a pain in my case. Maybe there's an easier way to do it, but um, anyway. SVGs, so use them. They're cool. You can come up with all kinds of, you can just find all kinds of designs and tweak them a little bit or just use them as is. Very, very easy to use. So SVGs and 3D printing. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.